Jai Ram Madhava Punjabi Dhari Jai Ram Madhava Punjabi
Parapanima Mahotsava Ki Jai. We have to wait a whole year for this wonderful day. And now it's come. This is even more auspicious than Janmashtami because Krishna made a condition. You got to surrender and then you get my mercy. Lord Chaitanya made no condition. He just said, take the mercy. So this is the day when the mercy is really flowing more than ever before. So tonight, instead of Gita, we're going to read from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Charitamrita Ki Jai. Okay. Let's read a few verses. This is a very key verse. I'd like to just, I'm not going to do it responsibly. <clears throat> I'll just go ahead and read it. Jaya, but we can repeat after me on this. Jaya, Jaya, Shri Chaitanya, Jaya, Nityananda. Jaya, Daitya, Tanya, Jaya, Gora, Bhakta, Vrinda. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nichananda Jaya Daita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nichananda Jaya Daita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Anarpita Charim Charam Karanavatirna Kalau Samad Huh? Oh, if for those who want to read along, this is Sri Chaitanya Charamita Adi Leela Chapter 3, Text 4. Adi 3, 4. CC Adi Leela. Anar pita charim charat karana vatirna kalau samar paryatam unvalo jarvasam savakti shriyam hari puracha sundara juti kadamba sundadi bita sadahridaya kandare sparatuva sachinandanaha. They, they, that Lord, who is known as the son of Srimati Sachi Devi, be transcendently situated in the innermost core of your heart, resplendent with the radiance of molten gold. He is distended in this age of Kali by his causeless mercy to bestow what no incarnation has ever offered before, the most elevated mellow of devotional service, the mellow of conjugal love. Purpur. This is a quotation from the Vidagva Madhava, a drama, a drama compiled and edited by Srila Rupa Goswami. So Rupa Goswami is actually giving us a blessing that may Lord Chaitanya be situated within our hearts. Very auspicious. We're just going to keep reading. There's so much nectar here overflowing with Lord Chaitanya's mercy. Text number five. Porna Bhagavan Krishna Vajanda Kumara Gokule Vrajera Sahanitya Vihara. Lord Krishna, the son of the king of Raj, is the supreme lord. He eternally enjoys transcendental pastimes in his eternal abode, Goloka, which includes Vrajadam. Purport. In the previous chapter, it has been established that Krishna, the son of Rajendra, the king of Raj, is the supreme personality of Godhead with six opulences. He eternally enjoys transcendental variegated opulences on his planet, which is known as Goloka. The eternal pastimes of a Lord in the spiritual planet Krishna Loka are called Aprakrita, or unmanifested pastimes, because they are beyond the purview of the conditioned souls. Lord Krishna is always present everywhere, but when he is not present before our eyes, he is said to be Aprakrita, or unmanifested. So that Krishna, who is unmanifested, he becomes manifested by the devotee's love. Lord Brahma explains in the Brahma Samhita, Premanjana Charita Bhakti Valochanena 
Santaksa Daivra Hida Yeshuva Loka Yanti Yang Shama Shunja Ramachunt Yoganas for Rupam Govinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Bajami. I worship Govinda the primeval Lord, who is Shama Sundar Krishna himself with inconceivable and innumerable attributes, whom the pure devotees see in their heart of hearts with the eye of devotion tinged with the salve of love. So that Lord who is unmanifest to the eyes of the materialists becomes manifest to the eyes of the spiritualists, the devotees. Text number six. Brahmara ekadine tino ekipada avatira hanya karena prakata vihara. Once in a day of Brahma, he descends to this world to manifest his transcendental pastimes. Text seven. Satyateta dvapara kali chare yuga jani. Se chari yuga divya eka yuga mani. We know that there are four ages, yugas, namely Satya, Treta, Dvapara, and Kali. These four together comprise one Divya Yuga. Ekatara Chatur Yuga, Ekaman Vatara, Chaudraman Vatara, Brahma Radvish, Dvivasha Vitara. Seventy one Divya Yugas constitute one Manvatara. There are fourteen Manvataras in one day of Brahma. Report, a manvantara is the period controlled by one manu. The reign of 14 manus equals the length of one day, 12 hours in the life of Rama. The night, and the night of Rama is this, of the same duration. These calculations are given in the authentic astronomy book known as the Surya Siddhanta. This book was compiled by the great professor of astronomy and mathematics, Bhimo Prashad Datta, later known as Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami, who was our merciful spiritual master. He was honored with the title Siddhanta Saraswati for writing the Surya Siddhanta, and the title Goswami Maharaj was added when he accepted sannyas, the renounced order of life. Text 9. saptama banvatara Shatta Shala Chatta Yuga Tahara Antara. The present Manu, which is the seventh, is called Vaivashvata, the son of Vivishwan. Seventy two Yugas, Divya Yugas, twenty seven by four hundred and thirty two thousand, or make twenty seven by four million three hundred and twenty seven, excuse me, <laughs> twenty seven by four million three hundred and twenty thousand solar years of this age have now passed. Purpura, the names of the four Manus. We didn't study this in American history. This is pretty heavy, heavy duty stuff. How the whole, how Lord Brahma is there on one day of Brahma. What happens in one, it's this amazing history here. Purpura, the names of the 14 Manus are as follows Svayambhuva, Svarochisha, Uttama, Tamasa, Raivata, Chakshusha, Vaivashvata, Savarni, Daksha, Sarani, Brahma, Sarani, Dharma Sarvani, Rudra Praput, uh, Rud, Rudra Pruta, Rudra Sarvani, Raucha or Deva Sarvani, and Bhautiyaka or Indra Sarvani. Text 10. Ashtavingsha Chattar Yoga Dvaparve Rashe She Vrajerva Sahite Haya Krishnera Prakashe. At the end of the Dwarpa Yuga of the 28th Divya Yuga, Lord Krishna appears on the earth with the full paraphernalia of his eternal Rajadam. He doesn't come alone. He brings his, all his paraphernalia with him. Purport, now is the term of the Vyavasvatumana during which Lord Chaitanya appears. First, Lord Krishna appears at the close of the Dwapara Yuga, the 28th Divya Yuga, and then Lord Chaitanya appears in the Kali Yuga of the same Divya Yuga. Lord Krishna and Lord Chaitanya appear once in each day of Brahma, or once in 14 manmantaras, each of 71 Divya Yugas in duration. From the beginning of Brahma's day of 4,320,000,000 oh years, six Manus appear and disappear before Lord Krishna appears. Thus, 
1,975,327,000 years of a day of Brahma elapsed before the appearance of Lord Krishna. This is an astronomical calculation according to solar years. This is pretty scientific stuff here. This is like, this isn't like, but I mean, they were taught this in Sunday school class. This is pretty high level stuff, very high level knowledge here. Text 11. Dasha Sakya Vatsala Sengara Chari Rasa Chari Bhavera Bhakta Yatta Krishna Thara Vasha. Servitude, Dasha, friendship, Sakya, parental affection, Vatsalya, and conjugal love, Shingara, are the four transcendental mellows, Rasas, by the devotees who cherish these four mellows. Lord Krishna is subdued. So, things are not. Um, there's this philosophy, all is one, but actually within that oneness there's unlimited varieties. Within those limited varieties there's four, actually there's five characteristics. Uh, neutrality wasn't mentioned, it's a very, very insignificant rasa. The four primary rasas are given here. You can be a servant of the Lord, you can be his friend, you can be his parent, or you can... You can be his lover. These are the four transcendental mellows or rasas. And Papa now describes this. Uh, Dasha, Sakya, Vatsaya, and Sangara are the transcendental modes of loving service to the Lord. Shanta rasa are the neutral stages. Don't mention this verse because although in Shanta rasa one considers the absolute truth as supreme great, one does not go beyond that conception. Shanta rasa is a very grand idea for materialistic philosophers, but such idealistic speculation is only the beginning. It is the lowest among the relationships in the spiritual world. Shantaras is not given much importance because as soon as there is a <clears throat> slight understanding between the knower and the known, active, loving, transcendental reciprocations and exchanges begin. Dasha rasa is the basic relation between Krishna and his devotees. Therefore, this verse considers dasha the first stage of transcendental devotional service. So that's servitude. My dear Lord, I am your servant. You see. Here as neophytes in the going through the training uh, of devotional service, we all take up that mood of service. We don't jump, well, I'll be Krishna's girlfriend or his boyfriend or his parent. No. That's only a liberated state. You can realize that. But as, as neophytes going through the training of the, under the bona fide spiritual master and the Vaishnavas, we can take, we can enter this mood of dasha rasa. I'm the servant of the Lord. You see, that's what we embrace now, is in our neophyte stage. I'm the servant of the Lord. <clears throat> so let's see what can, more is unfolding here. In this nectarian chapter. Dasha saka prita mata kanta ganalanya vajjikrinda karni krishna prama vishtahanya. Absorbed in such transcendental love, Lord Sri Krishna enjoys in Vraj with his devoted servants, friends, parents, and conjugal lovers. Purport. The descent of Sri Krishna, the absolute personality of God, it is very purposeful. In Bhagavad Gita it is said that one who knows the truth about Sri Krishna's descent and his various activities is at once liberated and does not have to fall again to this existence of birth and death after he leaves his present material body. In other words, one who factually understands Krishna makes his life perfect. Imperfect life is realized in material existence in five different relationships we share with everyone in the material world. Neutrality, servitorship, friendship, filial love, and amorous love between husband and wife or lover and beloved. These five enjoyable relationships of the material world are perverted reflections and relationships of the absolute personality of God in the transcendental nature. The absolute personality, Sri Krishna, descends to revive the five eternally existing relationships. Thus he manifests his transcendental pastimes in Vraja so that people may be attracted into that sphere of activities and leave aside their imitation relationships within the mundane. Then after fully exhibiting all these activities, the Lord disappears. So, these pastimes of the Lord are the, the great mercy of the Lord upon us because the, the fact is that we, since time immemorial, we've been rotating in the cycle of birth, death, old age, and disease. 
to 8 million 400,000 species. It's not fun being in a material body. What to speak of being in a lower species, like a dog or a cat or a rat? You see? It's, um, it's not a very fun position, but why are we in this situation, one might ask. Actually, we're all eternally liberated souls, the associates of the Lord in the spiritual world. So well, how did we end up in this predicament? Well, the spiritual world is a place of voluntary service. Nobody is, there's, no, there's no lock on the door that you have to stay here. Uh, everyone's there because they want to be there. But if somebody gets curious, what would it be like if I was the supreme? You see? Then Krishna gives you a chance uh, t- to imagine yourself as being the supreme. You take birth in the material world, and you try being Brahma for a while, and that's not, you get tired of that, you try being Indra, you try being this and that, you try so many ways to be the supreme, enjoy material life, and each time it doesn't work, so you try a different species. It wasn't good being a cat, let's try being a dog, let's try being a, a, you know, a human being, let's try being a demigod. We try all these different ways to enjoy this conception of I am the supreme, you see, we try again and again and again and again and again. We fail, so we keep trying. But if we're intelligent enough, if we're fortunate enough, we come in contact with a bona fide spiritual master or devotee of the Lord who says, hey, what are you doing here? You're not meant to be in this place, rotting in the cycle of birth and death. You're one of the eternally associates of the Lord. What are you doing here? And identifying with this flesh and blood when you're actually an eternally liberated being with it. A body which is full of bliss and knowledge and never gets sick and old and dies. Why are you identifying with this rotting corpse? You see? They go, well, huh, I don't know. Is this a cult or is this real? You know, when <laughs> I checked it out and I found that it was real. You see, I had rejected so many pseudo spiritual pathways. I got initiated by the Moon Guru. I tried his mantra. It didn't work. You see. I even went for a special help session because it wasn't working. And they, they took me to a private room and okay, get into your mantra now. Still didn't work, you know. I felt like I, you know, I felt like I have an airplane and I'm trying to take off on an endless runway, never get any lift off, you know. No lift off, you see. But then one night in Denver, Colorado, in the, a wonderful year of 19, for me, a wonderful year of 1968, a friend of mine named Patrick Dolan, he came over and he started chanting this mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And I looked up to Patrick, and, I, and like he was some kind of a higher knowledge person. I looked up to him very much, and when he chanted Hare Krishna, I took it very seriously. I checked it out. He told me about an article in the Saturday Evening Post about the, um, the summer of love in Haight-Ashbury and how there was this Swami named Bhakti Vedanta. And he, was, he had taught this mantra. And there was the mantra printed in Saturday Evening Post. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. And the Swami said, by chanting this mantra, there'll be no more trouble. Oh, wow, I'll try. And then I found this picture of Radha and Krishna in a, in a, in a gift shop, a big poster. I put it in my, made, a, put it in my uh, made an altar, and I was offering my food. And it really worked, he said. It really worked. And then I found out there was a whole movement that was doing it. I actually started on my own before I knew about the movement, I really knew about the movement. I heard about it, but didn't really understand what it was. But I knew, but I was experiencing the bliss of Krishna's name. I was experiencing the bliss of offering foodstuffs to Krishna and taking prasadam before I even met the devotees. You see. Then later on, I met the devotees, and, and I realized, yeah, this is, you know, this is really real. You know, this is really real. I went to the, the Lord. Ch- I went to a Lord Chaitanya festival in Dallas. And they had a huge diorama of it as high as the ceiling, a big, huge, a 20 feet high diorama of Lord Chaitanya. And they were carrying him down the street with a kirtan. And the police came and blocked off Turtle Creek Boulevard. It's a very nice boulevard in, in Dallas with the creek there and 
Right? Very beautiful boulevard, Turtle Creek Boulevard. We used to have our, our first temple was there on Turtle Creek Boulevard. It was a big house with a huge yard. But, you know, we, we, grew, we bought a church and outgrew that little house. But, but it, I was really impressed that, wow, I could see that going down the street, chanting and dancing Hare Krishna, this is actually something that can revolutionize the whole world. So I thought, well, I'll experiment. For six months, I'll make this experiment, you know. We have, there's all those rules and regulations, you know. No illicit sex, right? No meat eating. For a hippie, that was a big one. No illicit sex. No meat eating. No gambling. You know, no intoxication. All right. I'll give Hare Krishna a try for six months. I'm going to follow these rules and chant 16 rounds. And I did. It must have only taken a couple of weeks to convince me. He said, yeah, this is it. You see, this is it. This is the perfection of existence. Krishna has very kindly manifested in the form of this Krishna consciousness movement. He is kindly manifested in the form of Lord Chaitanya. You see. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Garadhar Shri Vasudev Gora Bhakta Vrinda. He so kindly appeared, you see, to destroy all anxieties. I had a wonderful realization about anxiety today, you see. People think anxiety is bad. But let me ask you, in your, in your car, you have a little warning light in the dashboard, right? Is that a bad thing? No. It's, it's a good thing, that warning line. So if something's wrong, if you need a tune-up, it comes off. It, tell, it comes on and tells you. So the, that red light is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. You see? So anxiety is simply a, a psychic red light is all it is. It's not a bad thing at all. Anxiety is not a bad thing. Anxiety means it's time for a tune-up. When you're in anxiety, it means it's time for a consciousness tune-up. That's all. Not to, get, to become all bewildered and want to jump off a bridge or something. You know? <laughs> Anxiety means just the red light in your dashboard. It's time for a tune-up. So where do you go? You go to the devotees. You go to the guru, you see. The devotees, the guru, they'll give you a tune-up. Consciousness tune-up. Here's what you do. All right. Chant like this. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Give up illicit sex. Mediating intoxication and gambling, and you do it every day, and you're gonna, you'll be, you, it's like, um, I remember when I was in, um, what is that example? Oh, yeah. I remember many years ago we had a, a stereo set, I forget, my dad had it, I forget, it was a tuning knob, to get in, yeah, for FM, yeah, for FM stereo f fights, you know, listening to FM stereo music. This radio set had a, had a tuning knob and it had a fine tuning knob. You know, so the audio files that can really get in there, you know, and get exactly the, the best tuning. So you tune in, you see, by chanting Hare Krishna. And finally, it was the fine tuning knob also, that's the 10 offenses. You get really serious, you find out what are the 10 offenses and you avoid those. And now you're fine tuning and you're getting into where. And actually, when you get totally tuned in, perfectly tuned in, then Krishna becomes manifest. You actually experience Krishna 24 hours a day. And all time, and wherever you, when you see Krishna within everything and everything within Krishna, wherever you go, even at Walmart, you can experience Krishna in every aisle, you see. When you fine-tune your kindness, you see Krishna, Walmart within Krishna and Krishna within Walmart. What to speak of it, the temple, you see. So take this process seriously, as we say here in Texas, y'all, <laughs> take this process seriously, and I guarantee you, your life will become unlimitedly sublime, and even in anxiety, you'll be welcome. And you get anxiety, you'll be welcome. You see. So any questions? Gurmanaji, you'd like to add some points? Yes. Jambavati, Devi Dasi, yes. You may have to help me by charm. How do you get up fearlessness? How to cultivate fearlessness? How to cultivate fearlessness, yes. Well, what is the greatest fear we face? Death. So you have to learn how to become deathless. And then fear is 
And then fear no longer touches you. You have to become deathless. You have to learn how to enter into deathlessness, you see. What did Prabhupada say? There was a famous lecture called Deathlessness Begins at the Time of Initiation. You see. When you get initiated, you've achieved deathlessness. Now, you have to keep your vows, you see. If you flip, if you get off the path, then you begin in the, de- the world of death again. But then, you, but then you can always pick yourself up. Well, I slipped off. I didn't do my rounds for a little while. I broke a few principles. Oh, but it's okay. Just get back to your vow, you see. And by you're following your vow, 16 rounds, the four regular principles, avoiding the offenses, you're, you're situated in deathlessness, you see. And that means fearlessness, you see. So you just got to embrace your initiation vows to chant 16 rounds every day. Follow the order of the spiritual master, avoid the offenses, and you're, that you're already, then you're there, you're deathless. And death for you will be a piece of cake. Just like going down to the, the car dealer and trade, getting a new model, you know. And so, trading in the old useless one that doesn't, needs to ride around in a wheelchair and get a young body in Goloka, you see, running around with Krishna and the cowherd boys and the cowherd girls. <laughs> Next. <clears throat> Yes. Yeah. Well, I was in, I was living in the temple, getting hearing all the I was hearing Vishnu John Swami's Bhagavatam classes every day, and uh, actually it was. Even when we sat down to Prashadam, he would tell Krishna book stories. He was like the mother and we were like the kids. And we, we would just sit and he would just fill us. I'm taking Prashadam, he'd fill our ears with Krishna Leela. I mean, it was really powerful stuff. Very powerful association. And living in the ashram with a, a, a very, very wonderful sannyasi. Amazing experience. You can get it here once a week, but I was getting it 24-7. You see. So the more you can actually come and associate with devotees, that's the key. Take every opportunity. We have our morning program every day at our ashram. It used to be the temple. And they have beautiful t- How many have been to the ashram on John Woodway? Yeah. And we have the morning program every day. That used to be the temple. Every morning we have Mount 430, Mangalarti. We have Tulsi worship. Uh, we have Guru Puja, we have Bhagavatam every day. And now Krishna, because of this coronavirus, is keeping us, we're not heading out traveling to uh, Mauritius and India like we were. going to be here for an extended period of time. Take advantage of it. We're going to be here for an extended period of time, maybe up until Janmast, after Janmastami, it looks like, maybe. Unless the coronavirus just goes away all of a sudden in the next couple of days, which is unlikely. And we will all be wearing masks here before we know it, you know. <laughs> the whole country. We may have to all wear masks. But anyway, for us, it's, it's no fear because if coronavirus comes, no problem. Gologa Vrindavan Kija. Next. Next. Yes? You can never fully know Krishna. You can, even Krishna doesn't fully know Krishna. Do you know that? Krishna uh, knows everything about himself, but his glories are always expanding infinitesimally at every nanosecond. And Krishna is, can never keep up with his own glories. Even Krishna does, is not fully Krishna conscious. <laughs> so you just, you just know that you're the eternal servant and you have to be... Surrendered unto him, and you're okay. That's all you need to know. Next. Everyone satisfied now? Ready to become a pure devotee and go back to home, back to God, and get out of this? I think we're going to call this place uh, Coronavirus Loco. (laughs) 
Anybody ready, ready to get out of coronavirus loka and go to a place where there are no viruses? The only virus is Krishna Bhakti. <laughs> Everybody's infected with it. Uh, anything else? Go on to the next program. Let's see, the moonrise is another, another uh, 50 minutes from now. 7.49, the moon is rising. Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya's moon is... We had an old song called Lord Chaitanya's moon is rising. We used to have a traveling rap opera in this town. Bob, I'd like that he plotted for a, when he came to attend, hear our songs, but we had that song. Lord Chaitanya's moon is rising. So that's what's happening tonight. We have that rising moon of Lord Chaitanya. We may be covered by the clouds, but still his mercy will come through. Yes. Individual chanting? Actually, both, both have to be there. You'll be surprised to hear that individual chanting also has, they both have unlimited power. Because Prabhupada says if one, if, a, if one can chant the holy name of the Lord without offense, he becomes Jagad Guru, and under his influence, the whole world becomes Krishna conscious. So I, I instruct all of my disciples, now you almost become Jagad Guru. You almost become pure chanters of the name, so that by your influence, the whole world will become Krishna conscious. So yes, the, the individual chanting has unlimited power, and congregational chanting has even more power. <laughs> because we take our individual chantings and we, we what, is it, what is the word? Um, it's the word for it. Synergy, yeah. It, we, you take your individual chanting and my energy, we get all individual chantings, we put, pull it together, we get the synergy of all these individual chantings. But even if one of the person in that kirtan is, is absolutely pure, that there'll be a spiritual revolution. You see? But it's big if there's two or three who are chanting with absolute purity, you see, then, or five or six or 5,000 or 50,000 or 100,000. So it's the duty of every devotee to become a pure chanter of the holy names. That's your duty, given by Prabhupada. You become a pure chanter of the holy names. You see. And the more you do it, the more you're going to be, as we say, bliss and heavy. You're going to be bliss and heavy. The more you can become pure in your chanting, you'll be in ecstasy, absolute ecstasy. Every syllable, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Is it? Anything else? So what's the next program, Guru Mata? Should we keep going with more verses or what should we do? We can do more verses. We got all kinds of nectar waiting for us here. Yateshta Vihara Krishna Kare Antardana Antardana Kari Mani Kare Anumana Lord Krishna enjoys his transcendental pastimes as long as he wishes and then he disappears. After disappearing, however, he thinks thus. We get to actually see what Krishna thinks. Pretty amazing scriptures that knows what God thinks. That's pretty amazing stuff. Listen to this. Chirakala nahi kare prema bhakti dana bhakti vina jagatera nahi avastana. For a long time I have not bestowed unalloyed loving service to me upon the inhabitants of this world. Without such loving attachment, the existence of the material world is useless. Purport. Shh, kids, be quiet. Don't make any noise, kids. You're totally quiet, okay? Be very quiet, kids. The Lord seldom awards pure transcendental love, but without such pure love of God, free from fruitive activities and empiric speculation, one cannot attain perfection in life. Text 15. Sakala jagate mare kare vidhi bhakti Vindi bhakti vajjibhava paite nahi shakti. 
Everywhere in the world, people worship me according to scriptural injunctions, but simply by following such regulated principles, one not, cannot attain the loving sentiments of the devotees in Rajabhumi. Aishvara Ganete Sabha Jagat Mishrita Aishvara Shiti Lepre Menahi Mara Prita Knowing my opulences, the whole world looks, looks upon me with awe and veneration, but devotion made feeble by such reverence does not attract me. Purport. After his appearance, Lord Krishna thought that he had not distributed the transcendental personal dealings with his devotees in Dasha, Sakya, Vatsalya, and Majurya. One may understand the science of the Supreme Personality of Godhead from the Vedic literature and thus become a devotee of a Lord and worship him within the regulated principles described in the scriptures, but one will not know in this way how Krishna is served by the residents of Rajabhumi. One cannot understand the dealings of a Lord in Vrindavan simply by executing the ritualistic regulated principles mentioned in the scriptures, by following scriptural injunctions, one may enhance his appreciation for the glories of a Lord, but there is no chance for one to enter into the personal dealings with him. Giving too much attention to understanding the exalted glories of a Lord reduces the chance of one's entering personal loving affairs of the Lord to teach the principles of such loving dealings the Lord decided to appear as Lord Chaitanya. In other words, Lord Chaitanya appeared to take us beyond this, you know, holy, 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 approach we hear, you know, just like as a Christian, it was just like, you know, holy, holy. Of course, holy means something different in India, but we used to have a saying, we've been saying, holy, holy, holy. But, you know, but this is, Lord Chaitanya is taking you to a whole other dimension of the bhakti, bond, beyond the on reservation, the idea of having an intimate, loving, relation, personal relationship with God, you see. Now these... Like I, might, I remember when I was a Christian, my idea with God was um, he's about 20 feet tall and he has a huge long beard because he's very old. You know, some, t you know, it wasn't really the real conception. Text number 17. Aishvara yagan nividdi bhajana kariya vaikunta keyaya chatra vidhi mukti panya by performing such a regulated devotional service and on renovation, one may go to Vaikuntha and attain the four types of liberation. Sharshti sarup jasarva samya salokya sayujjanalaya bhakta yate brahma aikya. These liberations in our sharshti, achieving opulences equal to those of a lord, sarupya, having a form the same of the lord, samipya, living as a personal associate of a lord, and sayokya, Salokya, living on the Vaikuntha planet. Devotees never accept Suyuja, however, since that is oneness with Brahman. Purport. Those engaged in the devotional service according to the ritualistic principles mentioned in the scriptures attain these different types of liberation, but although such devotees can attain Sharshti, Sarupya, Samitchim, Saloka, they are not concerned with these liberations, for such devotees are satisfied only in rendered transcendental loving service of the Lord. The fifth kind of liberation, Suyuja, is never accepted even by devotees who perform only ritualistic worship to a saint. Suyuja, emerging into the Ramana effulgence of the Supreme Personality of God, is the aspiration of the impersonalists. A devotee never cares for Suyuja liberation. Bob says, why become one with God? Why become one with God? Become greater than God. Our philosophies become greater than God. Are they greater than God? Actually, Krishna accepts his devotees as greater than him. It's like Nanda Maharaj and uh, the mother just said, Krishna acted as a little son, obedient son, for example. Okay, next. Yuga Dharma Prabhatam Nama Sankirtana Shadi Bhava Bhakti Diyanachama Bhuvana. I shall personally inaugurate the religion of the age, Namas and Kirtan, the congregational chanting of the holy name. I shall make the world, the whole world, dance in ecstasy, realizing the four mellows of loving devotional service. So this is our 
Hare Krishna movement is for the whole world to dance in ecstasy. It's a nice goal, isn't it? Our, our, our agenda is to get the whole world to dance in ecstasy. Uh, let's see here, where is it? Where are we? Yeah. Apani karim bhakti bhava angikare Apani achari bhakti shikal musabare I shall accept the role of a devotee and I shall teach devotional service by practicing it myself. Purport. When one associates with pure devotees, he becomes so elevated that he does not aspire even for sharshti sarupya samitya or saloka because he feels such liberation is a kind of sense gratification. Pure devotees do not ask anything for the Lord for their personal benefit. Even if offered, in other words, devotees are so surrendered, they say, Krishna, whatever you want. If you want me to stay in the material world and preach, I'm willing to stay here. The devotee doesn't think even of going, I have to go back to Godhead. Of course he does, but a pure devotee is totally satisfied, even in the material world. He doesn't need to have to go back to Godhead. He's already back to Godhead within his heart. Even if offered personal benefits, peer devotees do not accept them because their only desire is to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead by transcendental loving service. No one but the Lord himself can teach this highest form of devotional service. Therefore, when the Lord took the place of the incarnation of Kali Yuga to spread the glories of chanting Hare Krishna, the system of worship recommended in this age, he also distributed the process of devotional service performed on the platform of transcendental spontaneous love. To teach the highest principles of spiritual life, the Lord himself appeared as a devotee in the form of Lord Chaitanya. Any questions, more? Yes. How much glorification? Shh, kids, be quiet. I can't hear the question. Yeah? Is it uh, one's uh, imagination, glorification versus the reality? Like, how would they know what Krishna was thinking? Oh, that, that verse? Of all these verses that you've been reading. How would they know these things? Well, this is written, this is composed by Krishna Das Kaviraj. This is by, when we become self realized, we even know, we can know everything. Everything can be revealed to a person who is fully self-revealed. Even what Krishna was thinking can be revealed. He can actually, Krishna can reveal everything to such a uh, realized devotee like Krishna Das Kavi Raj Goswami. Apanena kaila dharma shikane nayaya eta siddhanta gita bhagavate gaya Unless one practices devotional service himself, he cannot teach it to others. This conclusion is indeed confirmed throughout the Gita and the Bhagavatam. Yada yada hi dharmasha granir bhavati bharata abhyutanam madharmasha tadatmanam shajam yaham Whenever and wherever there is a decline of religious practice, a descendant of Bharata and a predominant rise of irreligion, at that time I descend myself. Paritanaya sadunam finishaya taduskritam Dharma Sangsta Panartaya Sambhavanti Yuge Yuge. To deliver the pious and annihilate the miscreants as well as to re establish the principles of religion, I myself appear millennium after millennium. So now many verses are being, are actually coming from the Bhagavad Gita now. And Krishna, then Krishna is saying here if I did not show the proper principles of religion, all these worlds would fall into ruin. I would be a cause of unwanted population and would spoil all these living beings. And he quotes another, another verse is quoted. So then in text 28, Therefore in the company of my devotees I shall appear on earth and perform various colorful pastimes Text 29, and thinking thus, the personality of Godhead Sri Krishna himself descended in Nadya early in the age of Kali. Purport, the Pratama Sanja is the beginning of the age. According to astronomical calculation, 
The age is divided into 12 parts. The first of these 12 divisions is known as Pratama Sanja. The Pratama Sanja and Shesha Sanja, the last division of the preceding age, form the junction of the two ages. According to the Surya Siddhanta, the Pratama Sanja of the Kali Yuga lasts 36,000 solar years. Lord Chaitanya appeared in the Pratama Sanja after 4,586 solar years of Kali Yuga had passed. So it's all very carefully calculated, you see, in the, in the various scriptures. It's very scientifically described. Thus the lion-like Lord Chaitanya has appeared in Navadvi. He has sh the shoulders of a lion, the powers of a lion, and the loud voice of a lion. So what's the program now? What's going on? The offering is going on. There will be an RT after that. Okay. All right. So during the offering, any last questions about the offering to the Lord Chaitanya is going on? Yes, Jambavati Devi Dasi. You help me with the question, if you can. I need to catch up. Uh, he has to repeat. My hearing isn't so good. What is it? Uh, is it only Come closer. By, Come closer. Is it only by chanting, or is there a process that we can follow step by step, like offering obeisances and everything, that uh, we can become mm -hmm. conscious? The, there are other processes like attending the RT, uh, offering obeisances. These are all to they all to enhance the chanting. They all they're all servants of the chanting. The, the essence of the process is the chanting. Everything else is. The, and, and the, is the uh, is to to facilitate our chanting. We do the service, which is chanting with our actions. We render service also. It's like devotees cook the feast today. Someone's doing. Some, they made this nice decorations. All this is this is also the, to perform devotional service is also uh, that is that is the manifestation of chanting because chanting is you're begging to be engaged in devotional service. And if a service opportunity comes and you don't take it, it means you're, you weren't chanting in the right mood. Chanting means I'm begging to be engaged in devotional service. So when devotional service comes, oh, Krishna answered my prayer. They asked me to wash the dishes. Thank you, Krishna, for answering my prayer. I was begging for service, and now I get to wash the dishes. Jai, Haribo. <laughs> you see? So chanting is a manifestation. Service is a manifestation of chanting. You're begging, you're, by chanting, you're begging for service. So the, if the service comes, you accept it joyfully. That means your chanting is perfect. Otherwise, your chanting is imperfect if, you don't, if you're not enthusiastic about the service. Okay? Yes? Then you need to talk to me, and I'll tell, I'll tell you how you can do it. <laughs> it's simply a matter of desire. Here's one little Here's one little trick that was very effective. Say, okay, I'm going to chant 16 rounds every day without fail, and I won't eat. I'll fast every day until I finish my rounds. Your belly will make you chant. Another thing is you go to, the real thing is go to bed, early, go to bed a little earlier and get up earlier. You see? It's like Guru Manaji and I get up early and chant our rounds before Mangalarti, which is at 4.30 a.m., we go to bed before midnight. I mean, I'm not watching the late, late show. <laughs> go at 10 o'clock is early in the material world. 9, 9 o'clock, 9.30, 10 is early in, in, for the materialists. They watch the late, late. There's the late, the late, late show, 1 o'clock also. I was before, I know it, I used to before I was a devotee. You know, watch the late, late show, you know. On Friday night, we'd say I watched the late, late show. I mean, it's ridiculous. Go to bed at 2.30 in the morning. You know, time. We're getting up at 2.30. You know. <laughs> People are going to bed the time we're getting up, you see. So yeah, the, try going to bed. What time you go to bed? In, what time you go to bed nowadays? Up to 11, yeah. 
What time do you get up? What time do you get up? <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> what did he say? 7.30? No. Uh, depends when he sleeps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thing is, you have to be regulated on taking a rest early, as early as possible every night, and getting up early every day. And if you make a vow, I'm not going to not going to take I'll fast till I'm around and then. You know, I used to chant during my lunch break at work. I'll do it. You see, if you're really serious, if you're really serious, you can do it. You will, and Krishna will help you too. The morning is the best. Before the sunrise is the best time because there's different modes of nature. Uh, the early morning is the best time for meditation. When the sun comes, there's different. There's the mode of goodness, the mode of passion, the mode of ignorance. When the sunrise comes, the mode of passion enters in. Sunset, the mode of ignorance comes in. So that period of time before sunrise, that's the mode of goodness. That's the best time for meditation. You can go deep. There's no distractions. No one's going to call you on the phone. There's no, there's no distractions. You get up early in the morning. And, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. You just go deep, deep, deep. And it's a very ecstatic thing. You feel great peace and happiness by doing that. Any other questions? Yes. Vaicharan, you help me with this question. Today's on the Holy Devil. Yeah, Holy Where? I don't know the story, so I'm just asking. She wanted to know uh, the story of Holi. I'm not in. Guru Maharaj knows it, not me. Uh, story of Holi? I don't know the story of Holi. Yeah, when I'm dressing the deities. Do we bring the white box? I'll just and get it right now. I think I forgot the white box. I'll go. Back, I'll go get it. No problem. So, during Vishanam, I can. During Vishanam, I can dress the baby. During the RT, I can get the white box, and then I can dress it right after the RT. I was always taking Vishanam. So, any other questions? Yeah. Sometimes it should be done. Sometimes it may be a little rough to, you know. It's like we're debating with atheists. We made it a little heavy, you know. Boom, boom, boom. It depends. Uh, sometimes it requires, it's, it's like, uh, you know. Certain things are done very, very gently. Sometimes you have to be very, you have to put a lot of energy sometimes too. It depends on the service. You see? If you're, if you're building... If, you're, if your service is to tear down an old building and put a temple in its place, you've got to be pretty rough when you're tearing down the building. You see? It depends on your service. Sometimes devotee, uh, you know, sometimes... It's like even in the Bible, there's a song called um, in the Ecclesiastes. It's a time... And everything there is a season. There's a time to be gentle, a time to be rough, also in Krishna consciousness. Time to be light, a time to be heavy. Our service is variegated, you know. Sometimes you have to be very strong. Prabhupada could chastise us very heavily, and we did things wrong, very heavy. Boom, boom. You see? So sometimes gentle, sometimes heavy, sometimes rough. But it's all love, you see. There's gentle love and rough love also. Next. Everybody's convinced now that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and we're his eternal servants. Any doubts? Many, many. I don't really read the Yeah, we're haunted with doubts. It's a... Guru Maharaj has pointed to the fact we're actually haunting with doubts. That's why we have to hear from these, these books of Prabhupada. These books will kill our doubts. 
We have to regularly study Prabhupada's books. So the fact that we're all haunted with doubts. That's why we're not seeing Krishna face to face. We're haunted with we're all haunted with doubts. Isn't it? So the more we hear and read, the more the doubts go away. And the, and the more become, our vision becomes clarified. So Huh? Huh? There's some kirtan more? Okay, so I'll go ahead and stop the lecture now. We'll have some more kirtan. Then there'll be the arti, and then there will be the peshadam.